two interesting things are happening early this week. One of them will be a little bit expensive, the other one not at all. Right behind me is a giant pile of bark mulch that was just delivered today. We've been waiting for it for a long time. I understand that in some parts of the country, you can haul all of the free bark mulch you want from locations that are set up for that, just for that purpose. Here in the Pacific Northwest, that's not an option. We were able to sign up for a free delivery, however, Actually, I think it might have been a $20 suggested donation, something like that. The catch is you never know when the delivery is going to come or how long you're going to be on that waiting list. For us, we've been waiting about eight months. So that's a, lo a long wait, but it's a lot of material and it'll last us for quite a while. All of this is chipped and shredded cedar, which will be great for what we want, mostly for walking paths, maybe some for the chicken run. We'll see what we use it for. Over here, you'll see another project that I've got going on. Tomorrow, I've got a plumber scheduled to come out and help us upgrade to frost-free yard hydrants. I've already dug out some of the dirt to give them a head start. If I can save a little money by doing some of the grunt work myself and not having to pay a skilled plumber to do that, that's the way I want to go. All right, it's the next day, and while I'm waiting for the plumber to get here, I might as well take care of some of this garden debris. We like to compost it rather than let it go to waste. Actually, I like to give some of this stuff to the chickens first, and anything they don't eat will end up in the compost bins later. This really dead stuff just goes straight into the compost bins. I really don't have enough compost bin capacity for what I really need these days. This time of year we have so many leaves to take care of that it's just a little overwhelming. Normally I'd use maybe two complete bins just to stack up dead leaves this time of year. For compost we use dead leaves mostly as the carbon source and yard, <clears throat> yard debris plus grass clippings as the nitrogen. And it's best to layer them in fairly thin layers so the composting really uh, gets accelerated. Because we have so many leaves to take care of this time of year, I usually just have them in those bins over there so I can just easily scoop a few into another bin layer on some more grass clippings when I have that in the spring and the summer and just keep 
piling up until until the leaves are gone. But like I said, we don't really have enough compost bin space right now. So I've been making this pile here. I mow them up first because the chopped up leaves compost a lot easier than the full uh, whole ones do. Plus it's pretty nice just to mow them up, get a little grass mixed in with them to help jumpstart the composting process. Since we're over here, I'll show you the location of that second water source that we're gonna be upgrading to a frost-free yard hydrant. I've got it taped off right at the moment because it was leaking. And that was actually the impetus for doing these yard hydrants at this point. Since this one had a leak anyways, we might as well upgrade it. And if we're having a plumber come out to help us, we might as well do the other one at the same time. So Patrick here is a great guy. He's done some plumbing work for us before. Yeah, I have to run a quick errand, but he's gonna go ahead and put this thing together for us and I'm just going to set it up as a time lapse. might be wondering about the shade umbrella. There was a chance of rain and I just wanted to keep the camera dry as well as rain out of the hole. It's a pretty nice day right now so I think I'll probably just move this out of the way. Those of you who don't know but may be curious about how a frost-free yard hydrant works there's a rod inside the pipe that shuts the valve off underground essentially a frost-free yard hydrant is kind of like automatically winterizing the pipe every time you shut it off when the valve down there closes it opens up a weep hole that lets all of the 
excess water in the above ground pipe just drain away. No water in the pipe means it can't freeze and it won't burst. We've reinforced the yard hydrant with this other pipe that's been driven down into the ground even further because when you've got a hose attached and you're dragging that around the yard, you wouldn't want to accidentally yank this thing too far out of position. I'll be filling this hole with gravel. That should give the water plenty of room to drain out until it seeps down into the ground further. Right now, with the hole open, you can just watch and see that it's working. But once the hole is full, you can still tell that it's doing what it's supposed to because as the water drains away, it creates a suction and you can actually feel that right on the faucet as the water is being pulled down and draining away. Let's give it a test before I fill the hole back up with gravel. Perfect, no leaks until I turn it off, and then the weep hole is doing exactly what it's supposed to. It'll be a real nice treat for us not to have to run inside the house to get water for our animals during the winter. This is a pretty good thing for us. How do I really feel about these new frost-free yard hydrants? Like I'm king of the hill! <laughs>